Well, I'm talking with Dr. Jerry Lipsy, who's had a long career in academia and with uh, breed associations and looking at, uh, at cattle genetics and cattle productivity and related topics. We're at the Cattlemen's College here at the uh, Cattle Industry Convention in Nashville and started kind of launched things here with a, a discussion about heifer selection and some of the importance of, of particular traits in, in building a, a good female cow herd. wonder if you could just give me a so first a little bit of your background and then we'll talk a little bit about the heifers. Sure. Well I'm a Michigan farm kid and graduated Michigan State and then went to K-State for a PhD and I specifically went there in the early 1970s because Kansas State was doing all the carcass work on what we call the new exotic breeds. Mm -hmm. um, Simmental, Gelvie, Maine Anjou, Kianina. So I was so excited as a kid to see those first cattle, the carcasses and all the details. Went to K-State, then went to American Angus Association for four years, then to University of Missouri for 20 years and 20 more years at American Simmental, Bozeman, Montana, just retired. Dr. John Patterson, NCBA, asked if I'd come here and talk about the import, among the most important traits of commercial cows is fertility. You know, down through the years, and I can talk 30 or 40 years now, land-grant universities and research institutions looking at the economics of cow herds. If you take a look at that, one of the, if not the most important point, will be how long those cows are fertile. John, do you know that of all the bred heifers in this nation, only about 50% ever make it to be six-year-old cows. That is just almost amazing, isn't it? So, so NCBA asked if I would discuss, uh, look through the science and the proof of what let some cows stay productive longer in the cow herd than others. So that's what I shared tonight. And you, you listed several Kind of characteristics or indicators yeah. that would suggest that some might last longer and what are some of those? I listed four. You know I first thought I said two two but that means that cattle that are either they're just wrong for the environment. Are they too big? Or are they too small? Are they too lean? Are they too fat? So the first one I listed was two, T-O-O. -O. Yeah. Uh, the second one I listed is really wonderful relatively new data that comes out of Colorado State, University of Nebraska, Mark, Montana State and that is they have strong data that shows that the heifer calves born early in the calving season that are also able to become pregnant early in the breeding season as yearlings stay longer, much longer than heifers that fit different descriptions. So that was number two. Number three is the one we've known for a long, long time. Whether we're talking about plants, farm plants, soybeans, corn, wheat, or farm livestock, pigs, chickens, and cattle, Crossbreds simply are more fertile, have more longevity than straight breads. So that's nothing new. And finally, I talked about some unique things, and I called about tipping points. You know, some cattle really don't have feet and joints and skeletal soundness to last long enough. Some cattle, some cows, just don't have teat and udder quality that can go out for 10, 12, 14 years. So there certainly are some conformational issues. John, what about docility? Oh my gosh, I don't think there's any doubt that we cattle people would prefer to keep cows that are easy to deal with. So the four points I made, we think are pretty darn important relative to cow fertile longevity. Then you did an interesting, interesting exercise where he brought in some heifers that are right behind us here and let the audience look at those heifers and uh, put up some of the information on them. They, they all appear pretty similar. They look like good heifers. Uh, no obvious uh, problems with being too big or too small. But there were some differences that might indicate that some of these heifers might work better than others. Oh, there's no doubt about that. So, so you're right. We brought in a nice set of um, Angus commercial heifers right here. They're pretty similar in the way they're sized and their frame and their body composition and so on. But they were quite different in the way they were born and bred. A couple heifers were born very early in the calving season and they conceived AI right to the synchronization right off the bat. And a couple other heifers struggled behind that in terms of age and pregnancy dates. You know, I just asked the audience, Please don't look for beauty. Please don't look for muscularity. Please don't look for any other trait in this exercise. It's just an exercise. Then how would you rank these heifers on potential fertility? 
it was a pretty much slam dunk that you had to take the older heifers. They were pregnant early. It's good, strong statistical proof.